24. Okay, this one. <laughs> I honestly think there's a, a shortcut here <laughs> based on their answers. I'm going to show you the right way to do it, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut that I saw. The reason I'm going to do it in that order is because you cannot count on this shortcut being here in the final answer. We just can't. So we need to know the right way to do this problem. So that one first, then the shortcut. <laughs> the rational function f is defined by an equation in the form f of x equals a over x plus b, where a and b are constants. The partial graph of y equals f of x is shown. If g of x equals f of x plus 4, which equation could define the function g? We need to figure out what a and b are. a and b are constants, and, you know, we need to figure this out. Why do I know we need to figure this out? Because down here in our answers, there are no a's or b's. It's just numbers. So I need to figure out a and b. Now, if I look at this graph... Come on, move down. There we go. I look at this graph and there are some points that pretty clearly are on this function, like right here at negative 10, negative 1, right here at negative 7, negative 2, right there at negative 5, negative 6. I think those three points, we can say pretty confidently they are on this function. So I'm going to say negative 10, negative 1 negative 7, negative 2, and negative 5, negative 6. Now, if I have two variables, and I'm trying to solve for two variables, you need a minimum of two equations. That would be a system of equations. If you have three variables, you need a minimum of three equations to figure them out. Okay, so two variables, we need to, we need to come up with two different equations. Well, Here's what we're starting with. f of x equals a over x plus b. f of x is the output that happens when we plug a number in for x. If we're graphing, f of x is the y. So it's saying here, if I put negative 10 and I do this math, I'm going to get negative 1 as my output. If I put negative 7 in here for x and I do this math, I'm going to get negative 2 as my output, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pairs. I'm just going to pick these two. It doesn't matter. You can pick any two you want. And I'm going to put, plug each of them into this equation in turn. And then I will have two equations. I'll have a system of equations. And that will help me solve for A and B. All right. So first, I'm going to take negative 7 and negative 2. I'm going to plug negative 7 in there. So I have negative 7 plus B. That's all under A. And that is equal to negative 2. Then I also have, I'm going to use negative 5 and negative 6. I plug negative 5 in for x, and I'm going to do this in, let's do this in green. Why not? So these two separate things here. All right, so negative 5 plus b on the bottom, a on top, and all this is equal to negative 6. All right, now I have two equations. I am going to get rid of these fractions down here. So first here on the left, to get rid of this fraction, I need to multiply both sides by negative 7 plus b. So that's what I'm going to do. And I, I know I realize now I have done a little bit of a disservice to myself. Let me move this over. Give me some space. There we go. <laughs> that's better. That's smart. All right, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 7 plus plus b. I'm trying to write really small and neat here. Okay, on this side, same thing, negative 7 plus b. I really did not give myself enough room, did I? No, I didn't. On the right-hand side, those cancel out, and I am just left with a. On the left side, I'm going to distribute <laughs> negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14, and negative 2 times positive b is a negative 2b. So now I have 14 minus 2b equals a. I'm going to slide that over a little bit. Okay. Now over here on this side, same thing. I'm going to scoot this over. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I need to multiply both sides by this here. This here one. I actually am Southern. <laughs> so it does come out every now and then. 
this here fraction, I need to multiply by the denominator on both sides, negative five plus B. On the right, that cancels those out, and I am just left with A. On the left, I'm gonna distribute here. Negative six times, times negative five is positive 30. Negative six times B is negative six B. Okay, now I have something, this is really nice, because I have 14 minus two B is equal to A, and 30 minus six B is equal to A. So these are equal to each other. They're both equal to A, so they're equal to each other. I can set them equal to each other, and I can solve for B. And from there, I can solve for A. All right, so I'm going to reorder them, put the variables first. Negative 2B plus 14 equals negative 6B plus 30. I am going to, it's becoming very messy, isn't it? Yep. I am going to add 6B to both sides. Hit the B's over here on the left. So negative 2B plus 6B is 4B. All right. And then I want to get rid of that, uh, excuse me, get rid of the 14 by subtracting it from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides and I get 4B is equal to 16. Okay, since B is being multiplied by four to undo that, I need to do the opposite, divide by four. So now I know B is equal to 16 divided by four or four. Yay, I know B is four. Woohoo. Now I'm gonna go up here and this can be, and actually I'm gonna write this right up here. B equals four. Okay, so if I need to erase anything, that's still there. Okay, now I can use either one of these two equations to solve for a. I'm going to use this one over here. So 14 minus 2 times b equals a. I now know that b is 4. 14 minus 2 times 4 is 8 equals a. 14 minus 8 is 6. a is 6. Yay! All right, now I know a is 6 and b is 4. Cool beans. Okay, I am going to erase all this. I hope everyone got what they needed from that because we are going to need this space. Okay. All of that just to find out <laughs> that A was 6 and B was 4. Okay, now let's go back and, and look at our problem here. It says if G of X is equal to, we're down here at... at um at this part. Okay. If g of x is equal to f of x plus f of x plus four, which equation could define g? All right, I'm going to rewrite this original equation because we had it as f of x equals a over x plus b. But we know now, we know that a is six. And we know that b is four. So that's the original equation. f of x is six over x plus four. Now, g of x is equal to f of x plus 4. So that means wherever there's an x in this f of x, we're going to plug in x plus 4. Okay, so there's one x. So for that x, I'm going to plug in x plus 4. Okay, and so that will give me 6 over, plug in that x plus 4, wherever there's an x, there's only one x, plus 4. Now, because these are all just being added, I can now remove those parentheses. X plus four plus four, I can combine those. And now it is X plus eight. Six over X plus eight, that is what G of X is. And that is C, G of X is six over X plus eight. Okay, I know that's a long road. It is, it's, a, it's probably the longest problem in here. Definitely one of the longest problems in here. Here is the uh, shortcut, which I'm going to show you because if you come across something like this, I mean, it's not a bad idea to look for this kind of thing, but don't count on it. Know how to do what I just showed you because that will take you through no matter what. All right. So here's the thing I noticed when I looked at this. I know that f of x is equal to a over x plus b. And they're telling me if g of x is f of x plus 4. So I know x plus 4 is going to go right there, right? So I could rewrite that original 
f of x as its a over, excuse me, what g of x, excuse me, is going to be is a over, and then there's going to be x plus 4 in for that x plus b. That's what g of x is going to be. They've told us that. So the a didn't change, right? A stayed the same. This little thing on the bottom changed. Um, Look at their answers down here. I'm zoom in so you can really see. We've got a 6, got a 6, got a 6, and have a 6 times an x plus 4. So my sort of assumption, my logical assumption at that point is, huh, the A on top, nothing's changing. You know, the only thing that's changing is on the bottom. So this one with the x plus 4 on the top, that seems ridiculous because I already know g of x is just going to be a over x plus 4 plus b. Now, are there circumstances where you have to simplify and multiply things on top and bottom? Yeah, there is. It doesn't feel like that's just, I mean, you know, from my experience with math, it does not feel like that's the case here. So I look and see we've got 6, 6, 6, and there's 6 again. My instant thought is, what can A be but 6? That's my assumption at this point. The logical assumption based on the four answers that they've given me, that A must be 6. Now I have to prove that. I have to make sure it works. I'm like, okay, if A is 6, I have three test points up here. I can plug 6 in for A and then pick any of them. I'm going to put negative 5 and negative 6. I'm going to put negative 5 in for X. I don't want to put negative 6 in for B and solve for B from there. Now, <laughs> that I jumped a huge portion. I jumped all those steps of plugging these in creating two equations, creating the systems of equations, solving for A. I basically, I just jumped fully ahead by just assuming that A is 6. In this case, I was right. And, and you're going to progress the same way as we did for the rest of the problem. But that was a little shortcut that I realized. <laughs> it's got to be, it has to be, um, that A ha would have to be 6 in this in this scenario. And, and just as a little, if you were, you're wondering, like, how you would do this. Let me just write it over here. Um, negative 6 equals 6 over negative 5 plus b. Same sort of thing. We need to get rid of that. So we're going to multiply by negative 5 plus b on both sides. Um, just leaves 6 on the right. Then you're going to distribute. Negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30. Negative 6 times b is negative 6b. And then you subtract 30 from both sides get negative 6b. I am going through this pretty quickly. 6 minus 30 is negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 6 and b is 4. Yep. <laughs> and once you know b is 4, then you go over here and you're like, okay, my a is 6. My b is 4. Combine those, there we are back again, 6 over x plus 8, c. Again, I am not telling you that to say that's what you, um, <laughs> that that's going to work every time because generally they're uh, more subtle in their answers and they give you some, a variety of things to kind of, a variety of things that you can come up with as answers so that they're not just giving the game away. <laughs> by using six in every single answer. But I'm just pointing this out again. Keep your eye out for clues in these answers, especially for these trickier problems. There often are clues in the answers that can cut down on the time you need to spend. But that first method that I showed you, even if they don't give you that sort of clue in the answer, it will still work. But that is a really long problem. It's just, it's just is. It's going to take you a minute. Hey guys, if this was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know so I can keep helping you and others like you. Comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Also, if you're interested in practical or fun math related items like this math clock or this hopefully humorous t-shirt, click on the links down below to check out my spread shop and Etsy stores. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.